And that's how we broke autumn 30 seconds into the recording. That was like 10 seconds in. I don't know who we're kidding. Well, I mean, I have to say congratulations on building the first D&D character that I am very attracted to. That's like, I'm excited that this has happened. Yeah, and I just need you to send me a couple pictures. <laughs> Don't put <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Jared. And I'm Autumn. And we are Coaches and Dragons. Coaches and Dragons. And so for this video, we wanted to do another character build, this time focusing on our theme, which we called Bardcore Magic. So Bardcore Magic is really about looking at what makes a bard a bard, but really about living a creative life from the sources of our pleasure. Because uh, here at Coaches and Dragons, we really see the bards as taking the things that bring us pleasure, creativity, and joy, and using that to fuel their magic to support their allies and debuff their foes. So what we want to do is we want to see how this character build can bring bards to in real life to teach us something about our own sources of pleasure, how we might also be able to support our allies and our friends in real life using a little bit of that bard magic for ourselves. So we're excited, we're excited for this character build to help us build some additional character. There's so many people who tell the stories about how their character has helped them learn a lot about themselves and how they show up in the world. So we love taking these ideas from all of the stuff coming through Coaches and Dragons and saying, let's build a real character that helps to really drive that home. And a great example of this is like a, a friend of ours, we were just chatting with them and they actually played a bard because they wanted to feel more confident using their singing voice. So they made a choice in their character build to say, this bard has to sing and I'm gonna commit to the bit every session and sing like whenever the bard would sing. Do you wanna tell the group kind of what our approach is? How do we how do we do this? Yeah, I think the goals of this are simple. So what you and I are gonna to do today is we're gonna take a look at what are our goals for such a build. So if we wanna say, Let's dive into building a character that really centers around pleasure, creativity, and other themes that we have from Bardcore Magic. What are our goals for the build? What might be some additional inspiration, um, whether from pop culture or other things that might inspire us to like bring this character to life? And then finally, um, some character rules. And so these are really like the design constraints that say, what are we gonna say yes to? And what are we gonna say no to? And that helps us make some clear choices about who this character is and how they wanna show up. But I think more importantly, help us refine and stay focused on the learning goals we have. So that way this character actually can teach us something about ourselves in real life. Let's dive into the goals for the build. So we talked about Bart Core Magic, talked a little bit about the theme. Um, I think one of the blog posts that we wanted to pull from was our blog post called the, the Life of the Party, which is a little bit of a play on this idea that a a bar sometimes has a reputation for being the life of the party, right? A little bit of bacchanalia, a little bit of drunken revelry, a little bit of playing a lot of extra tunes. But I think we kind of took that as kind of a play on words, uh, pun very much intended to say, how are we using like the things that inspire us and like the stories about life and like lived experience as like being a benefit to your adventuring party. So I'm curious, like when you think about like the, the life of the party as the inspiration for this bard, like what are some goals that you would have for this build? Mm. I mean, even when you're going in and being that life of the party and channel of that, like the first word that comes to mind is confidence. Needs mm. like high confidence. It's about, it's somebody who whenever there's a choice about being in the background versus being in the front, you're in the front. Not, hmm. I'm not talking about battle, but I'm saying this is not a person who is comfortable like taking a seat back. I kind of want like this character to be one that is like, let's turn it all the way up where like you are going to be the person on stage. When somebody's like, can we get a volunteer for the stage? Your hands, you're already walking on stage. If we're talking about like being of service to others, right? Like bringing the life to the party, like maybe it is about like trying not to fade into the background. So they aren't somebody who's just like on the back lines, like supporting people and just like hanging out. It's like, nope, we are going to have like presence and it is going to be known. The first person to like volunteer for a community service project, like would be this bar. Like, yes, we should be of service to people. Like this is the right mm -hmm. thing to do. Like they very much like step in versus kind of like step to the side and it, even like outside of her performance context. Like it's almost like the world's a stage and I take center stage when I need to. 
it's interesting like what already comes up when I start to do that because like I, I apparently I'm gonna need to play this character because I'm already starting to like panic about certain parts of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's bottom line this goal and let's call it uh, support takes center stage. Yes. Cool. I like that. All right, what would be another goal that we have for this build, do you think? What's running through my mind, and which I don't know what's there, but I'm going to name it because I think it's important, is <laughs> when I think about support takes center stage, boundaries start to become problematic. Mm -hmm. In terms of like, if your bias is to always say yes in a support situation, it can become really easy to put other people before yourself. And so I'm, I'm wondering, like, is there a second goal or not that's around like, I imagine when I want somebody to go and be able to be that life of the party and tap into their experience, I still want for them to be able to say like, I don't have what I need to be there right now. If, you know, if support takes center stage... Like, maybe there's, like, boundaries are bliss. Like, there's some sort of, like, okay, they found an enjoyable way to say, this is where I'm going to go, this is where I'm not mm -hmm. going to be. I think we can just say a goal for the build is that there should be either some way, like, mechanically or somehow, like, in the character story that they have, like, some sort of code for how they say, these are the things that I say yes to, these are the things that I support, and, like, these are the things that I don't. Like, let's put... Like, let's put the coach hat on for a minute. Saying no can be just as powerful. Mm -hmm. Beyonce is not going to play every show that Beyonce is requested to play at. Beyonce is going to have some rules. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> so maybe that is like the goals for the build is like one, that support takes center stage. But two, like it feels like maybe there does need to be some kind of like strong paladin-esque, like boundary setting, kind of like this is my line. Yeah. Some sort of like, <laughs> we can call it like a support infrastructure <laughs> in some ways to be like, this is like, this is like what they're building. This is what they're saying no to, again, to re reinforce boundaries, buttress them, etc. So another thing that I was thinking for this one, especially as I went back and, and was looking at what we were talking about with Life of the Party, I got this sense of like, just this reverence for life, for what's been there and what's there around you. Just kind of this, like, I'm here to enjoy whatever's here. Not necessarily, like, I'm here and I'm trying to change things, but I'm here and I'm so effing happy to be here. I'm imagining, like, when the rainstorm hits, you're like, I am so excited to dance in the rain and jump in puddles. There's something about how to make use of the it is what it is. You know, when we think about pleasure, a lot of times we often kind of go to, like, the things that we don't have. There is a gratitude practice of, oh, everything you need is right here. And so maybe that's just like a resourcefulness in how they approach situations. But like, I could also see like, where maybe the types of spells that they choose to use are ones that like, don't try to like change the environment, but like really like embrace and like work with what is here. There's something about this that makes me really excited from the creativity standpoint, because mm -hmm. if I'm landing in a situation that generally I would be unhappy about to say, I am not going to be unhappy about this. I'm going to find this. Like that opens up your creativity. How can I look at this, look at what's around to tap into that pleasure so I can freaking love exactly what's going on right now? Pleasure is a really great way to help us like restore and replenish, but I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want this bar necessarily to model a like, oh, I'm feeling bad. So then therefore, what can I bring in? Love. It's like, oh, yes. let's embrace what is here, which is the really tough emotions, people seem really stressed. And I think that's kind of maybe the line to walk. It's like, this is not a person who is like super optimistic, like good vibes only. It's like, no, it is what it is. So how do we want to choose to respond accordingly, right? If you're looking for outside inspiration for this build with those goals in mind, like kind of grounded in gratitude, grounded in the here and now, they've got boundaries for days, but support takes center stage. What kind of inspiration comes to your mind? In my mind, I always think of toddlers as like peak creatives because they know no boundaries. <laughs> Everything is still possible. So they don't know that things maybe aren't yet. They're still like, yeah, I want to be a unicorn writer when I grow up. Okay. <laughs> um, but I think there's, they don't necessarily have that second piece. Um, so it's kind of like, like, I wouldn't necessarily know if they would be grounded. 
Okay, but there's something here I think about like the the toddler childlike creativity of it. And honestly, what that makes me think of is like <laughs> maybe like their bardic magic comes from finger painting. Or maybe like a teacher, they're like, hey, it's okay. Just imagine like the world is a crayon or like a box of crayons. Like which one do you want to color with today? <laughs> something you just said just brought me Miss Frizzle vibes from the magic school bus. Oh, yeah. Miss Frizzle was a bard could be the inspiration. Yes. I feel like I just went to Miss Frizzle land <laughs> as soon okay. as you said that. Miss <laughs> Frizzle um, is on the board. <laughs> yes. Is there any other like inspiration that you want to build? Like, I think it's sometimes it's helpful to like do like a mashup, right? So like Miss Frizzle meets blank. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? So <laughs> I don't know why. Don't ask me why. When you said Miss Frizzle meets blank, I thought of Joey from Friends. Because it's like, <laughs> Joey loves food. Joey loves his friends. Like, Joey is like an actor, like, and always like trying to like do the most productions. Like, kind of a little naive, which might have a little bit of the toddler energy we need. But like, very supportive, right? Very vocal. And like, when they're angry, they're angry. Like, and there's all kinds of other things. I don't want to go too deep into the Friends saga, but like, I just get, like, what is, like, a friendlier version of, like, Joey loves food, but, like, meets Miss Frizzle. <laughs> like, very appreciative gratitude, like, of, like, very everyday experiences. <laughs> I love the idea of somebody you're completely comfortable leaving your children with and somebody you're not. <laughs> what happens when you put them together? <laughs> Both of which could possibly raise a duck. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I'm here for that, and I can see it. And it's like, I have to tell you, I feel like I definitely need to play Miss Frizzle in a campaign. And if we're going down this route, I cannot wait to see what you come up with because this is very exciting. Part of me almost wants to say, <laughs> Miss Frizzle and Joey, that character combined, who just got back from a month long silent retreat. Yeah, I'm wondering if. Like with the meditation retreat, like I feel like actually there's something with the meditation retreat that's really interesting because like that would be a great like, why is this person adventuring now? Like they were on a silent retreat and now like they've entered onto this adventure. It makes me wonder if, like I think sometimes with the hippie thing, I think it kind of doubles down on the like Miss Frizzle, like teachable moment energy of like, what we really got to focus on here is mm -hmm. this. Yes. I think I got it. You said something <laughs> that nailed it. I feel like the third component to this is they've been a they've lived off the grid for three years or whatever. Like they have <laughs> been homesteaders. Or this is a person who like they've lived off the grid. They know how to get their electricity. Every time it rains, it's like, ooh, yay, water for the plants. Like everything has a purpose. You <laughs> They're a bard that has been so alone, everything is a hype moment. Everything is a Joey, like, whoa. <laughs> if we were to break down, like, what are the things that we would want this character to teach us, right? I think there's something about the, like, quirkiness, ingenuity of Miss Frizzle, right? And, like, that kind of, like, preschool teacher energy. Then there is the, like, pleasure place of Joey, like, unapologetically doing what Joey wants to do because, like, that's what Joey loves food. <laughs> and then <laughs> combined with this kind of, like, emotional resilience, like, piece like of the homesteader of like everything is a gift you take what's here you give back to like the earth you live in like we're all connected like and very appreciative of any sort of social interaction <laughs> yes yeah, okay. yeah that feels that that feels right for me how is that feeling for you i think that feels really good you know you and i when we talk about pleasure it's really easy to think of pleasure as like when you go to a buffet like choosing from what you want from the buffet I think the way that we should be thinking about pleasure, though, is like not even looking at a menu, not even looking at the buffet, but first asking the question like, what am I hungry for? And then going out for that, right? It's like saying, oh, I'm hungry for Thai food, then choosing the restaurant instead of being like looking at all the restaurants around and being like, oh, that one looks good. And I think there's something about the like self-reflection piece that maybe like helps make their creativity, their like sources of pleasure as inspiration, like more potent because they spent that time alone. And so now they can really reap the benefits of like being in connection with others. There's something, if I think about that, what am I hungry for? 
Joey knows they're hungry and knows what they're craving. Mrs. <laughs> Frizzle knows kind of like how that translates to nutrition. Oh, this is what your body needs. And the homesteader knows this is what I need to go and get so that I can get that nutrition. All right. So last section, character roles. So with this section, we want to try to come up with uh, like three things we want to say yes to and three things we want to say no to. This person is like a yes and, like very curiosity driven. So they aren't very like stingy. They're very like generous of spirit. I think the other things that we said yes to is like they aren't trying to change things. Like they aren't like a change manipulate type of person. They aren't going to like, they might try to sway or influence, but like it's going to be like through people, through their values. It feels like there's this like experience over change, like wanting to experience, like saying yes to experience rather than change or control. This is the type of the person who wants to experience change, but not necessarily change their experience. Say more about that. Like, I think this is the type of person who is okay experiencing like the change of seasons, like a cha like change in environment, change in circumstances, like very attuned to like what that might be and having to adapt to it. But they aren't sitting in a place where they're like, okay, I need to change the experience I'm in. And so they aren't trying to like manipulate things to be like, oh, I need my stuff like met now. I like that. I think it's a very clear yes and a no. And so there was this part of me that's saying like, mm. oh, as we talk more about this, it's less of them being impulsive. I think the, I think let's phrase it as an, in the no column. Like this character is not impulsive over intuitive. Mm. Right? Like they're they're not just like doing whatever they want when they want it, like because they want it. Like, and I think that's like a thing, like from even from a pleasure perspective, like I think that's when it gets into like really self-indulgent territory, right? I'm 100% here for like taking care of yourself, but you don't want to do it at the risk of like harming yourself, at harming others. I like that. I like that a lot. I, there feels, I'm feeling this pull now as we're talking through it, of it being, of there being something about this character that it's kind of like if somebody presents an opportunity for them to experience something for the first time, they almost always want to say yes to that. So when I'm thinking of other no's we could add to this character, I feel like there's something about, maybe they're really hesitant about harm. And I think maybe they're very vigilant about seeing others come to harm or harming themselves. And I think it's like trying to make a distinction between danger and recklessness and maybe that kind of bundles into the impulsiveness but i think maybe they've got some more nuanced views like not so much around like avoiding pain mm. but avoiding and like trying to get people out of situations where they might be like harming themselves or harming others i there's something very interesting about that like there's something incredibly intriguing about playing a character who's a pacifist i like that idea i think there's something really intriguing um, yeah. Is there any other important guardrail for us to put up that just makes it so much easier for that to happen? I think we're going to do maybe what might be controversial here. Uh, we talked about the boundaries being a key thing. I think this is a no to helping others before they help themselves. And like playing with that as a constraint. And I'm not saying that they would like leave any other people in the dust, but I think like creating a character that can somehow teach us like the to walk that line between not letting kind of harm come to others, but mm -hmm. also recognizing like that they need enough stuff in the tank to like be able to show up and like support center wow. stage. And I think that might be like the final no piece to kind of like click this build into place. I mean, that's really, that's, <laughs> it's really interesting. I think like bards can, there's a lot of help that they can do in it's really interesting to say like, do I need this help first? And so I'm here for that. I am here for that. Let's do that. Yes, Jared. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So we've got goals. We've got the inspiration for the build and we've got some character rules to play with. So I think next up, I got to go build a character and we'll see what, what comes up with. All right, Autumn, are you ready to dive in to the character we built for Bardcore Magic? I'm ready. I can't wait. So, you walk into a tavern, 
And at the bar, you see a lone bartender polishing a glass with a new cloth. And he looks to you and says, if you want company, you best go out back. And you see off to the side, there's a doorway. And through the door is the glimmer of firelight. So you walk through the empty bar, past the bartender, through this doorway, and you see a group of people surrounded by the campfire. Their attention is on tonight's entertainment at the center. You see a fur bulk whose long hair drapes down past their shoulders, small flowers, almost like stars adrift in the night sky, scattered throughout the locks. Their drum is beating. And as you walk closer, you almost feel the tempo of the drums also increasing. And for a moment, you start to think, is this the drums or is this my own heartbeat as I approach? Everyone is gathered, clearly listening in for tonight's entertainment, the firelight illuminating their rapt attention and the soup bowls almost growing cold in their hands as small critters and even the floor and fauna all seem to be focused on this lone entertainer. As you approach, the entertainer makes eye contact with you and says, Welcome, friend. It's my pleasure to meet you. But I'm curious, what is your pleasure? I'm very excited. I definitely feel like I would be very drawn to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for creating this person. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I would love to introduce you to Rangalore. So Rangalore is a bard. Um, they're a furbolg hermit by background. And the subclass I opted in for uh, Rangalor was that of the Glamour Bard, which we'll get into some of the reasons behind that here. So what I wanted to really build on for this character was this idea of Miss Frizzle, right? So someone who's kind of like compassionate and very gentle, but also like trying to pull more curiosity out of other people. And historically bards as a class um, like originally they're kind of based on like actually a Celtic archetype. So there's a lot of nature magic kind of naturally in the initial bard. And that seems like a really great inspiration for how to take this person who's very immersed in the environment, grateful for kind of what's around them um, and to dig in. So here's a little bit of uh, Rangalore's backstory here. So Rangalore has been a fixture among all the villages skirting around the Feywild for a few centuries now. And his visits often feel like the spring. They bring tender new joy to those who hear the beat of his drum. Yet folks don't really know if he's just gonna be visiting for like a day or for a season or how much time until his next visit. So most of the people like in the surrounding villages would see Wrangler almost like a sign. He's kind of like got this mythical presence uh, and his stories and his lessons are all about kind of the hospitality and also like the impish wit of the Fae. So, even like the animals and plants are like, feel like they're listening in. And as he's telling these stories, I kind of envision him as someone who kind of reminds the adults to be children and teaches the children to be adults. But he does it all that through this kind of gentle guidance and storytelling um, to bring people back to community, back to the hearth, and most importantly, back to like their own body, right? Their own. And so, you know, it might be thought that like he's no mere drummer, but some say his drum teaches others what their own heartbeat feels like. And so what many do not know is that his stories of the Fae and other creatures, for example, as an adventure hook, are not quite so much fanciful things, but real and present dangers. And if they were to follow him back into the wood um, whenever he leaves, uh, they would learn this out for themselves, but they do not. And so he'd make sure to keep his own solitude, content in his loneliness, nature with his muse, but he finds newfound pleasure and all that will change when he next returns. So I think this kind of idea of a character who kind of is like kind of popping in and out of people's lives, I think was really interesting. And um, especially with the bard, like, I think it was kind of an interesting play to say, hey, like, is there a way to make him actually feel a little bit more like a mythical figure instead of like making everyone else the mythical figure, which is often kind of how the bard works. And so trying to invert some of the kind of paradigms here, but focusing here on, I think, the pleasure on the storytelling 
on the ways of being of service to others, but clearly like Ringlor is taking care of um, himself before other folks, right? There's this kind of, I don't want to say distance, but it's not going to get into a parasocial thing where everyone knows where <laughs> Ringlor is at any given point in time. Um, so that's a little bit about uh, the backstory that I kind of envisioned for Ringlor. And I think, you know, if you're to think about why they might be adventuring, why you would put this character into game, right? They could be a guide for um, something in the Feywild. So for example, you and I, Autumn, were playing Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Like, I think Wrangler would be like a great fit for that type of campaign setting. Um, maybe like a child just goes missing in the woods. He's just simply visiting a village that he knows very well and like has a reason to go in to the woods to find a missing child or missing person. That's a little bit about Wrangler and his backstory. I love this direction with it. You know, I took some notes as you were going through and sharing it. And I think this is totally not where I thought this character is going to go, which is why I always love these, because I think you continue to surprise me. I love this twist on, I feel like there was so much about this character going in and kind of having them be this, you know, kind of evoker of pleasure, but like, creating pleasure around and it seems like there's something here like I imagine that when he walks into the room it just is pleasing yeah like it's like his mere presence evokes this like mm. anybody who's around is gonna savor every moment and what is created by his presence because at any moment he might be gone and that and that it might never happen again. I think that's part of what's so much more surprising about this character choice is I, I think we've been thinking like this is the type of character build that I think this is going to create other people in the party. This is going to create an opportunity for other people in the party mm -hmm. to get to explore their creativity and I wasn't so much expecting that, right? I'm thinking we get in the headspace of this character to do that. When you give me other characters, I'm like, I'm ready to play. I'm ready to play them. This one, I want to play with him. There's just something amazing about what you built because like, I really want to play with somebody playing that character. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really grateful for that feedback. Cause I think what's interesting with bards is like, I think bards, and we talk about this in our blog post on like life of the party where Bards want to support the party, right? And they've got a lot of spells and things in their toolkit that are really designed to like be a part of a larger team and a part of a group. I could also very much see like the other party members, like maybe they're also of the village and like they, it was the last time they saw Wrangler was like their grandmother was someone who saw Wrangler, right? And so like, you know, you get all these other like community ties, but out of all of the things a bard could be proficient in, right? The uh, instruments that they could play. I really came back to this idea of the drum and the drum being that, that kind of heartbeat, that kind of, um, if you've ever been to like a silent disco, right? It's like when everyone is in sync to the same like beats per minute, right? But also kind of getting that same sync and patient that like really gets you like in your body, gets you present, gets you grounded. I really wanted to bring that forward. It feels almost like mm -hmm. when you are just looking up at the stars and you happen to see a shooting star. But what I love too about that, I think the nuance with that is that that is part of what leads to the idea of like not harming others, not being impulsive. Because if this was a character who was those things, the tale, it wouldn't be about this like presence with this. It would be about what Rangalor has done. And I don't think that's how people would be talking about Rangalor, right? I think if you were to find flaws to like role play up, I think. You know, Ringlor, I think, is designed to kind of be a little bit more like unattached, right, to things, to folks, like very much like in his own element. And so I think that's kind of where we talked about this harm of like, oh, I don't want to harm other people, but I will certainly help myself before helping others. And I could very much see Ringlor not putting himself first, like out of like selfishness necessarily, but from a like, ooh, I got to do the thing that's like for the greater good first and like might take his own track, right? It might come across as like very individualistic or self-serving or like mysterious. Um, but I think you could have to figure out how to like play up this like unattachment, like very deeply cares, very generous, but might be looking at like a little bit of a bigger picture, right? Might be mm -hmm. looking at the trees and the forest, so to speak. 
like Wranglor is when when they're done, they're done. Yeah. When they're done, they're done. It's like, okay, bye. And they do <laughs> if they say bye at all, they enjoy being there when they're giving. But like once it's not there anymore, it's kind of like, okay, bye. <laughs> and they're out. Yeah, and I think there's something about um, the ease with which Wrangler can probably walk away, right? And I'm sure that could be something to play up in a party dynamic of like, dude, you just like totally bail. And it's like, that's not maybe the fish to fry today, right? There's some other bigger, maybe agenda, right? I think you want to play into like the wisdom of the walk away, but I don't think that that can uh, go without some some ripples. So I think with Wrangler, so some of the key features, like I mentioned, the ancestry is for Firbolg. And what I liked about this is there's kind of this like lore connection to nature, to the wilderness, to a little bit of like the Fey Wild as well, mm -hmm. um, but very respectful of nature. So um, a lot of the features are kind of designed to like help them move through the forest, like kind of without disturbing anything. So I think there's a natural kind of appreciation and gratitude in that. Um, they also have a little bit of a longer lifespan um, by D&D uh, &D standards. So I think this idea of like him being able to pop in and out, like from the forest to the village and that sort of thing, it kind of laid the groundwork there. But I think some of the other smaller little features, like Verbolks have this ability to speak with beasts and plants, which I think is really interesting. They can speak to them, but the plants and animals might not necessarily be able to like speak back. But I think this idea of kind of wanting to communicate to the outer world, right? Finding connection to so many other things around, right? I I love that way of bringing in the home, that homesteader vibe that we've got. Like, and I think that that's where part of that Miss Frizzle is coming in as well, mm. is like this kind of exploratory, like, I, like I can totally see Miss Frizzle kind of talking to the creatures, talking to the plants, doing this stuff, but I mean, like, of course they're not going to talk back, you know, <laughs> but Absolutely. still doing it anyway. There's this magic in it versus like Joey talking to them and being like, why aren't they talking back? <laughs> they do in the movies. They do in the TV yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting into the subclass then for a Wrangler. So the subclass I chose was uh, Glamour. And it was kind of interesting going through like the different options for Bard because I think given what you and I had talked about, I could see you know, version of this character that if we were just really leaning into like more of the self-serving or like wanting to take center stage, that being something that like, how else would you centralize more of a character, right? And I thought like, oh, someone who could get into the front lines, which would lead to maybe more like swords or valor. But the more I thought about it, uh, this kind of being of service, I lean towards the glamour bard. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One of which is their kind of early feature that they get is called enthralling performance. And I know we didn't want to charm and manipulate people, but the idea is when you use this feature, you have this kind of enthralling performance that charms folks who are listening to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of like bringing other people together, I think, again, maybe a rule of thumb as your role-playing wrangler would not be like, oh, I'm going to perform for one minute to like do it to manipulate folks necessarily, but to maybe do it to draw a crowd. And then the other thing that they get at a later level is a feature called Mantle of Inspiration. And I thought with the drumbeat, and um, that would be kind of really interesting too. So the idea with Mantle of Inspiration is that you take on this kind of almost like ethereal like visage, right? You take on this different appearance and when you take it on, you actually inspire your allies and then they can take a bit of free movement at the same time. And so I thought for someone who takes support and center stage, it's like, what a way to make them the focal point while mm -hmm. also kind of extending this kind of influence to other folks to inspire them to move, right? To chase, to get movement into their bodies. And so I think you could role play this certainly as a way of like, they almost like inspire folks to be more encouraged, to be willing to go into the chase, to go hunt and find and do whatever they need to do. Um, while kind of building them into that kind of center stage piece. So compared to some of the other bard classes, which might be more musical or lore based, I thought like there's a nice tie in here. And typically Glamour Bard also has some connections to like the Feywild. So I thought that would be a nice way to kind of start to weave in some of the subclass choices with some of the ancestry we chose for Wrangler to like this kind of neat little nature based bard kind of package. The other thing that I think goes back into the character inspiration that we have is this Miss Frizzle. Like, I think there's this sense of mm -hmm. like, with her, when I think of, like, I feel about 
she evokes this bravery and this adventure mm. and kind of like you feel like you can do more like go get on this bus and we're gonna go do things so i think it brings in a lot of that vibe too of this thing of like yeah come on it's safe let's do a little bit of extra let's be a little extra today so we're um if you don't know um here at coaches and dragons we are all about a little extra <laughs> <laughs> give us in a fact, little that's extra. the only newspaper we subscribe to is extra 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 <laughs> read all about it <laughs> Um, yeah, so do we need to, like, have a Coaches and Dragons newspaper? Maybe. Stay tuned. <laughs> or, better yet, subscribe to our Coaches and Dragons newsletter, where you can get all of our barcore magic tips. So we don't have a newspaper, yeah. but you can get something directly in your inbox every week. I love it. That was not even intentional, but here we are. Go to our newsletter. It's awesome. And while you're at it, like and subscribe. Ding that little bell. Thank you. <laughs> Wrangler would appreciate it. <laughs> With that, I want to chat a little bit about more so than other character builds that we've done in the past. I love to chat a little bit about kind of the spell selection here because I think, you know, there's different ways to play a bard, but I think if you really poke around in the bard spell list, like I'll read through some of the spells that we chose here. Um, I think playing on this idea of like doing no harm, like <laughs> you and I actually did a five cantrips uh, video and there's a certain bard spell that you know is a signature spell of theirs as a cantrip that does damage. I didn't use that one. Um, but I did choose stuff like message and mending um, and prestidigitation, right? So prestidigitation was a choice. Um, usually it's picked up on wizards as well, but um, I did it for the Joey loves food energy because you can like warm or flavor a dish. <laughs> and I thought that would be like <laughs> Wrangler, like low key, making sure that his pleasure is met um, on the side. Um, but there's really great spells here too. Uh, you've got uh, fairy fire, you've got healing word. I think even like something like hideous laughter, you could start to reflavor a little bit of like, maybe he just like really tunes in to someone's funny bone, right? And like, instead of this like, almost like madness, like turning into be like, hey, I just like found your pleasure button. And you've got stuff like invisibility, mirror image. And like, um, I would also dig into stuff like, especially at higher levels, like hypnotic pattern. Um, this is kind of like playing on that kind of entertainment mystery piece. Um, they've got great spells like plant growth. And so especially if you're playing him at a higher level, say starting at level five, which is where we took this build to, like plant growth has this great benefit to a community, right? It actually makes harvest better if you kind of do it as a longer ritual. Um, and then I think to support the group, this idea of tiny hut, right? And any of those other sorts of spells that kind of build a sense of place, a sense of safety, um, and especially to like help others, right? Going back to this idea of a life of the party, um, helping others find their pleasure. So. With that, the other thing I did want to mention, if you take a look at Wrangler's character sheet, which we've dropped in the description below, um, I took at level four, for the example of this build, something like Fey Touched, which allows you to um, get Misty Step as kind of a freebie. Um, and then for this one, I thought it was appropriate to take Bless, um, which is usually reserved more for clerics. But again, going back to this, like, hey, I'm here to take care of the community, here to show up, but support takes center stage here. Um, so those are some of the things that they're probably more atypical for a bard to choose in terms of their spell list. But I thought really gave the sense of, especially for Rangalor, of kind of connecting to the community. Maybe there's a little bit more like kind of mischief and play with illusion, which felt very kind of fey oriented. Um, but again, still showing up and making sure that everyone else is supported too. What I love about, I think the two that stood out is the hideous laughter. There's mm. something that's so amazing when I go to this idea of like, you know, Wrangler not being somebody who's going to do harm. I kind of really am obsessed by the idea that when he does harm, it's through pleasure. This way of like, oh, I'm going to hurt you, but I'm going to hurt you in a way that you're really going to enjoy it. And that like, you're going to laugh yourself. It's like, you're, it's still going to be harm. You're still going to have a problem, but yeah. At least you're laughing, you know? <laughs> so there's something that I just love about that of like, even when I hurt you, it's joyful. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing that I really love about you doing Fae Touch is Misty Step. Cause that's the whole thing. Like this is basically like dipping out of a party unnoticed without having to say bye to anybody. Like, let me Misty Step out this place really quick so i love that misty step to me feels like such a powerful thing to kind of be like i'm done and you just misty step to the other side and just walk on out you know 
Well, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but that's also kind of why I love the Furbolg class too. So they actually have a, so if you want a Misty step to just totally bounce, you could do that. They also have an ability that comes with the ancestry called Hidden Step. And so let me read it out for you. So with Hidden Step as a bonus action, you can magically turn invisible until the start of your next turn or until you attack, make a damage roll or force someone to make a saving throw. And so you can use this trade a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you gain re <laughs> you make a long rest. So like there's multiple ways to kind of bounce <laughs> with Wrangler of oh. either dip in and out, <laughs> right? Like out of sight, out of mind, or like, uh, I'm just going to go over here. And I think that's where, <laughs> again, bonus <laughs> actions are usually pretty tough for bards, but I think there's something about like, there's multiple ways of, again, get out of either sticky situations or again, play with this idea of like, you didn't see me, I was never here. <laughs> um, oh. Building into this kind of mystery of like, where did he go? And he just like totally bamped out. So with this build in mind, any kind of final thoughts or reflections on either bard cord magic, finding your pleasure, or, you know, kind of building a character to help bridge those worlds between kind of Wranglor and D&D and real life? I mean, I think like, when I think about playing Wranglor, I think there's this great opportunity to kind of slow down, be calm, be focused on what's present, both in what's around you, but then also with yourself and there being this kind of tune in of like, is this what I want? Am I ready to want to be here still or no? And, and kind of connect, but there's, it means to know that means to kind of slow down, pause, observe, and be like in tune with what's there. And I think there's this like gentleness and this connection that's really strong with it. That's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's um, a really great, I think, kind of takeaway and final note to say, if you are in a place, whether you're building a character to help you out with this or like just trying to figure it out for yourself in real life, I think taking that moment to be still, to pay attention actually to your heartbeat is a great way to kind of ground and center um, before you start to say, okay, what am I hungry for? Like, what is the kind of pleasure spaces that I'm seeking and um, finding it naturally in the environment around you. And I think that's probably um, the thing I'm probably most delighted with, with this build in particular is I think Wrangler is a character who can be very grounded, very earthy, very content, um, and kind of make us rethink this idea of a bard as like this partying pleasure seeking, like bacchanalia, like character in a bottle and really say, hey, it's about community. It's about relationship. It's about nature. It's about just being like present with you. I can't wait for the day where we end up like doing some one shots with all these characters. It's going to happen. I'm manifesting gonna happen. it. We're going we're gonna to eventually get up to a party and then we'll have a party of all of our mm -hmm. characters for us to learn from. So um, if you really enjoyed this video about Wrangler, about Bardcore Magic, um, and you're excited to see more character builds like this one, let us know what you want to see in the comments below. Otherwise, we'd really appreciate a like and subscribe so we can cre keep creating content for you at Coaches and Dragons uh, to meet you where you are so you can learn to bring role play to the role you play in your life and eventually love your character sheet. All right, see you next time. Remember, chaotic good vibes only. Ciao. Ooh, bye. I'm just here for the tits. <laughs>